in. Why are these men threatened that I don't own a gun, that I don't drink beer, that I don't play sports? Threatened? By dismissing people like me as beta males, they're ignoring the complexity of the world around them. There's a fantastic essay by Adrian Rich entitled Women in Honor, Some Notes on Lying, that I used to teach to my undergrads. Here's one of my favorite passages. Quote, In speaking of lies, we come inevitably to the subject of truth. There is nothing simple or easy about this idea. There is no the truth, a truth. Truth is not one thing, or even a system. It's an increasing complexity. The pattern of the carpet is a surface. When wow. we look closely, or when we become weavers, we learn of the unit of the tiny multiple threads unseen in the overall pattern. So this is this is right here. What you're hearing, in my opinion, is the uh, beginning of the whole like two plus two equals five shit. So he says, he's saying like, oh, it's not really that; it's something else. There is no truth. This is totally postmodernist fucking horseshit, isn't it? Total postmodernist fucking horseshit. There's no objective truth. There's no objective facts. It's all subjective. Oh, it's not really a carpet. It's a bunch of fibers. Shut the fuck up, idiot. Soy the boy. On the underside <laughs> Let's bring back perfect. soy boy already. After reading this passage, I'd ask my students whether they agreed with Rich. Which is more complex, truth or lies? Most of my classes were pretty evenly split. Half of my students said something along the lines of, lies, lies are way more complex. The truth is simple. It's the truth. But once you start lying, you often have to come up with other lies to make sure your first lie isn't revealed. Right. The idea being, if you had only stuck to the truth all along, things would be simpler. Once you start lying, you can't ever stop. Right, so if you go around saying, like, well, men can act like women and still be men, uh, considered men. Or, 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 sorry, or, like, considered, like, a quality man. Or the other thing, oh, a man can have a surgery or put on a wig and become a woman. It's all subjective. It's all up in the air. Whatever. Who cares, right? This is, wow. <laughs> this I used to think seeing. this way, too. But what Rich does in the essay is show how lies are actually very simple. And the reason they're simple is because lies always move away from complexity. Whether we're telling a white lie, omitting information, or saying something flat out wrong, these lies are an effort to make things easier for the liar, often by avoiding the intricacies of a situation. The Projection? truth, on the other hand, expands to new possibilities. They might be uncomfortable, painful possibilities, but ultimately the truth opens doors while lies slam them shut. Hence, the truth is complex and lies are simple. I'm no. guessing the reason my Twitter trolls are threatened by so-called beta males is that we contradict their simple view of masculinity. They don't want to acknowledge the complexity of gender. I'm weirded out by you because you just sound like somebody who moon, you know, like has a double life at night, like kidnapping kids or something. Like I don't know. You sound like a like a gay child molester to me. Like you know. But again, Dahmer country. Like in my opinion, you know, if you're <laughs> if you live in Milwaukee or the Midwest or whatever. Or any, or fuck it. I mean, if you live in any, in any like dangerous coastal city that has like a fucking gay bathhouse district or whatever, or like has like huge LGBTQ lefty activism of any sort, you should feel kind of weirded out or quasi threatened, in my opinion. What, what's wrong Gender, with that? Of sexuality, just, of race, of. You're defending what's right. Privilege. And so they respond the only way they know how by calling me a soy boy. Okay. So he made, like, a part two, In the Shadow of Two Gunmen, part two. Let's see what he has to say. That was just really pathetic. That was so fucking pathetic on his part. I can't believe it. I think this guy's a professor? Something like that. Kind of sucks. August 5th, 2019. In the Shadow of Two Gunmen, part two. Yesterday, I wrote about my frustrations with white men perpetrating mass shootings. <laughs> FBI.gov. Plus the three solutions I'd like to see enacted to help fix this problem. Uh, well, first of all, you can stop lying. I love how just immediately I, f I click over to the next one. Oh my god, whoa. <laughs> That's me. I didn't even realize. Uh, but yeah, since then I've been kicked off of Twitter. Um, yeah, that's me. Spreading actually Vincent James's chart. That's pretty funny. I didn't even realize it, this going into this that I was a part of this uh, guy's little blog post here. But uh, no, he, he just got done talking about how lie was, lies are simple and truth is complicated. And now he's just in the very, very first sentence of the, of the blog is a lie that 
white men are the predominant uh, mass shooters. No, um, Blake, Blake gang members are mass shooters predominantly. It's just that your political movement does not include things like, you know, a rival gang shooting up of the picnic of another rival gang as a mass shooting. You only consider it a mass shooting if Don Lemon tells you that a disaffected, mentally ill white guy goes into a government building of some sort, usually a school, and shoots three or more people. That's the only context under which someone of your soy status or stature will consider something a mass shooting. So it's funny, you just got done talking about how lies are simple and the truth is complicated, and then the very first sentence in your next blog, the part two of your blog, is a lie. But we will continue. One of those solutions was from a person on Twitter, which ties into my focus for today. You see, a truly idiotic bot slash person recently responded to a tweet I posted in January of 2016. I have no idea why these Twitter trolls dig so deep, but I guess it's because they don't have anything better to do with their time. Anyway, here's a screenshot of my original Trolling guys like this on the internet is a fabulous way to spend your time, for the record. ...tweet, followed by my troll's response. Here's my original tweet from January 9th, 2016. <laughs> Nine, I hate that white men in Oregon are allowed to break the law while black people across the U.S. are killed for no reason. They're not killed for no reason. That's absolute nonsense. They're, oh my God, no. They're killed by cops because they reach for the cop shit. Do I even really need to go over this for the eight millionth time? This is like a heuristic. Is that the right word? If, if there's a police shooting of a Blake man, you can automatically pretty much assume that he was fighting with the cop. Hashtag 2016 confessions. And then the reply from Milo was here says, Aw, shit. They didn't do nothing. They didn't do nothing. <laughs> didn't do. And then yeah. there's a retweet from someone named Dorist. And this <laughs> tweet from... The worst, biatch! Tourist is just a picture of four charts, which I will go into more depth okay. later. Okay, okay. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. Let's see. For context... What's he got? Since it's been three and a half years, I was referencing Amon Bundy's occupation of the Malheur National oh, Wildlife please. Refuge in Oregon, and how law enforcement agents were patient and nonviolent toward Bundy and his followers, a remarkably different approach. Patient and nonviolent towards Chaz, Chop, Antifa, BLM for four straight fucking years, dude. And, th I mean, stuff like this does not age well because, I mean, what, what went on today with the whole, or, or sorry, yesterday with the shooting of the Trump gal, uh, you know, the Capitol building. I mean, what the fuck? Uh, you know, uh, she got shot because she'd like cl she climbed through a window of a door. Basically, she was unarmed, actually unarmed. She wasn't fighting with a cop. I mean, presumably she was about to, but uh, you know, you want you want to bring up that well, why didn't they use a taser or pepper spray? That would have actually been a perfect example of that. We all saw it. That would have been a perfect example of uh, the time where they would have wanted to use pepper spray. But no, he busts out. A, he fucking shoots her with a forty-five at point blank range, dude. Sorry, I'm digressing a little bit, but uh, I think I think a lot of the, these kind of people are tangentially related, or not tan not even tangentially, directly related in in, in how um, why and how we are where we are today. And in the then recent deaths of, say, Eric Gardner or Freddie Gray. Gardner. So that's the point I was making. And my Twitter troll here... Right, so you were making a point that is also a lie, because of course, as we know, Eric Garner has had health problems. Even if the, um, what is it, Hispanic American cop that did the illegal chokehold, uh, you know, hadn't done that, there's a high probability he would have fucking had a problem anyway. I think he had like a... Yeah, he had like a heart problem or some shit. As far as I'm concerned, that's that's the most rational explanation. Freddie Gray, I mean, that was an accident. And the driver of the van was a black cop, dude. Like, what the fuck? Responded with four charts to try to convince me that black people as a whole are guilty and that they deserve to die? <laughs> I'm not quite sure what the logic is. <laughs> Lies are simple and the truth is complicated. Am I right? No, see... Okay, so this fucking soy queer fag is trying to convince me and his audience and you guys that I just want all these people to die because they're all evil. No, no. We're explaining to you why 
they are disproportionately involved in crime. Well, they're disproportionately involved in crime and violence and all that stuff. So, and the media is lying to you about the circumstances of these shootings. And that's what we're trying to tell you. We're trying to get you to, sh- we're, trying to, we're trying to enlighten you as to the truth of the matter. They're more likely to be involved with crime. They're more likely to be involved with police encounters. And they're more likely to resist arrest violently. If, if an individual does that, I'm not going to use the word deserve, but it's sort of like, it's sort of logical. I mean, like, well, what's going to happen? What the fuck do you think is going to happen, dude? Come on. Here, because there isn't any. Let's look at each image individually. So the first of the four images is actually uh, six different bar charts put together. They all have very similar color schemes. Um, In the bottom, they're measuring black, Hispanic, and white. The black bars are black, the Hispanic ones are kind of a tannish color, and the white uh, is white. And for each of these six graphs, it represents the same trend, which is that the black bar representing black people is the highest, the Hispanic bar is the second highest, and the white bar is the lowest. These six charts all have different titles. Here are the titles going from upper left and then moving down the chart. Murder and manslaughter rate per 1,000. These also all come from 2016 FBI crime data, by the way. Next one is robbery rate per 100,000. Carjackings, rate yep. per 100,000. Uh, white woman, yep. Aggravated assault rate per 100,000. Overwhelmingly black on Motor white. Motor vehicle yep. theft rate per 100,000. Yep. yep. And prostitution rate per 100,000. And again, you see the black bars consistently higher, <laughs> oftentimes uh, like three or four times higher than the white or Hispanic bars. This chart has very tiny text in the hopes that seeing large black bars will scare you. (laughs) The source of the information was so tiny that I had to do a Google image search just to find the source. That search gave, uh, that search result gave me this chart. And this is a blown up larger version of the upper left one, the one that said murder and manslaughter rate per 100,000. We can now see a little bit more clearly that for the black row we have for the black bar it's 12.37 the hispanic one is 2.54 white is 1.42 and then there's a source at the bottom from the fbi right so what the fbi statistics show is that adjusting for population size blakes are what like 10 times more likely to commit violent crime than white people so to merely look at white people and black people as a whole and go, oh my God, black people are more likely to be in jail than white people. That's racist. Or black people... And by the way, aren't black people less likely to be shot by police officers than white people under the same situation? So that's that's also bullshit. Uh, but no, I mean, if, if there is any context under which that's more likely, either of those two, th- two things are more likely to happen, it's probably because they're more likely to commit violent crime and fight with police officers. It's in their music. It's in their fucking culture. It's in their f- f- folklore, I guess, if you will. I mean, it's all violence and hostility toward authority figures. I mean, these people are so sheltered and bourgeois and stupid, man. Which, as far as I can tell, matches up with the top left chart in the first picture my Twitter troll sent me. This data definitely does not look good for black people, I admit. (laughs) However, when I went to the website at the bottom of the chart, the one credited as as its source, then I found something completely different. Table 21 isn't about the murder and manslaughter rate, but the number of arrests based on ethnicity. And the overview for this table provides some really interesting stats. Here's a screenshot. And then I include a screenshot from my computer that includes the URL so that you can see that it's the same as the one listed at the bottom of the bar chart. And this is the Uniform Crime Report, Crime in the United States 2016. The overview for Table 21, uh, which includes arrests by race and ethnicity, 2016. Here are a couple bullet points listed on in the... Uh, the screenshot. In 2016, 69.6% of all individuals arrested were white. Right. 26.9% were black or African American. Way and overrepresented. 3.6% were of other races. Way overrepresented. Of arrestees for whom ethnicity was reported, 
18 points. Okay, so already, already it's not looking good for him because what what is it? Young Blake men were like 3 to 6% of the population, right? About 3 3 to 6% of the population, but uh 26 27% arrested. <laughs> I mean, dude, that's way the fuck overrepresented. 69 per, 60, 70% are white, okay? What do we have, like 60, 70% of the population is white? Okay? So that's that's equally represented or underrepresented. Okay, so it's already not looking good for dude. Wonder, I mean, hey, you know, maybe he'll bust out something that's really, you know, it's going to th thunderstrike me. Who knows? But we'll continue. 0.4% were Hispanic. Of all juveniles, persons under the age of 18, arrested in 2016, 62.1% were white, 34.7% were black or African American, and 3.2% were of other races. Of juvenile arrestees for whom ethnicity was reported, 22.8% were Hispanic. Of all adults arrested in 2016, 70.2% were white, 26.2% yep. were black or African American, and 3.6% were of other races. And then that's the bottom of the screenshot. I included the website address at the top so you can see that it matches the source from the chart. The difference is that I clicked into the table overview. Anyway, almost 70% of all people arrested were white. The overview also yep. says that 59% of people arrested for violent crimes were white. Right! If you look <laughs> Right, white people are equally represented, proportionate to their population size, you imbecilic, chest-slapping, mental invalid. At murder, black people accounted for 52% of arrests, but white people <laughs> weren't too far behind at 45.4%. Oh. So yeah, when you look at the FBI's own arrest data from 2016, it's way less flattering for white people than it is for black no, it's people. not. So this first set of this photographs guy. isn't enough to convince me that it's over. <gasps> this guy, okay, this guy's a fucking, this guy's a professor, right? It's, it's, okay, th this goes back to the soy boy thing. Oh, he, they're just threatened by my effeminate wiles. It's like, well, yes, because your effeminate, your effeminate nature is precluding you from telling the truth. Right now, it's, it's precluding you from having basic understanding of math. I mean, listen, I got D's in math, and I still understand this better than he does. What the fuck? K for white officers to kill unarmed black men. <laughs> Maybe the second image will. And then there's a no. screenshot of the second image. Uh, the second wait, chart wait. is titled Changes in Male Homicide Rates by Race, 1980 to 2015. Uh, below that in smaller text, it says number of homicides of males per 100,000 population, 1980 through 2015. Uh, largely what we see here are lines of different color stretching from 1980 to 2015. The line at the top with the highest numbers here uh, is the line for black people. It starts off fairly high in the 1980s, kind of peaks at around 1990, starts dipping into the 2000s, uh, but here at the very end of 2015, although it is still lower, it's kind of pointing upwards again. You have the other lines for the other races, including Hispanic or Latino, American Indian or Alaskan Native, White, Asian or Pacific Islander, all of those kind of more or less max out uh, at the same level currently in 2015, which is much, much lower. You can see that the black rate here is about twice as high as it is for all the other races. This one is my favorite, because the graph doesn't have anything to do with my Twitter troll's argument. Again, given the fact he said, aw oh, shit, they didn't do nothing, I think he's trying to convince me that most black people are criminals. Oh my god, no. Dude, he's demonstrating that he would fail a basic IQ test right now. <clears throat> no, I'm not saying that most black people are criminals. I'm saying most criminals are black people. It's the exact... I mean, dude, it's... <laughs> No, it's the no. It, it, it's it's not that most black people are criminals. It's that a disproportionate amount of black people are criminals. It's that it's that if you're in a if you're in a major city and there's like 
someone who held up a convenience store and shot the clerk, you can use you can basically assume with beyond a shadow of doubt. I mean, come on, that it was a brother. You can. You just fucking can, dude. Does he deny this? That's what How the first of the people? are trying to prove, and I think that's what this one is trying to do too. However, this isn't a graph that shows the number of men perpetrating killings. It's the opposite. This is the list of men who have been killed. The graph right. says so itself. Number of homicides of males. Right. Intraracial. Number of yes. homicides by males. So, as but, you can see, but, black men are murdered about twice as often as men of any other race. By black people. Just to confirm I was reading this correctly, I researched the source of this graph. It was from an incredibly short blog post by the Prison Policy Initiative, where the author's first line is, quote, I wanted to compare homicide victimization across racial, ethnic, and gender groups over time, since this data is deceptively difficult to find in one place, end quote. So we're looking at victims here, not perpetrators. Which, <laughs> now that I think fuck? about it, may be how the first set of bar graphs should be read too. Black people... Perpetrator and victim... I mean, do I even need to get into that? I... I... I what? What? I... I just... What the... I'm 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 thunderstruck. By the way, Chris Kaiser, thank you for the uh, for the lemonage. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm, I'm thunderstruck right now. It, it I, I lost my place. I'm sorry. I just got to well, continue. Murdered way more than white or Hispanic people. Oh right, right, right. Yes. So he's 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 being deceptive right now. He's saying, well, the chart doesn't show perpetrator. It shows victim. Okay. Well, we know that the victim will most likely be victimized by a perpetrator of their own race. We know that. So what do you what do you anyway, what do you on to image number three? This one is of another bar graph. Uh, the yep. title says interracial violent crime from 2012 to 2015, and we have different categories at the bottoms at the bottom here. Going from left to right, this is the one with the tallest bar, black on white. Yep, and then white on black is considerably shorter. Facts, Hispanic yeah. on white is the second tallest bar. White on Hispanic is less than what we saw with Hispanic on white. Hispanic on black, very little. Black on Hispanic, about the same as white on Hispanic. And then, uh, for some reason, the, all of these bars are red, and then to the right of it is another red square um, that's unlisted. It should come as no surprise that this chart is also incredibly misleading. I was first tipped by the floating red block to the right, where a key would normally be. I mean, the red block isn't even labeled. Why have a key when you only have one color for a chart? This one was a mess from the beginning. When I went to the Bureau of Justice site matter. cited above, then the first thing I noticed is that the color scheme for this... Every attempt of his to demonstrate how these numbers are misleading has fallen flat. It, the report isn't it, red and black, but green and blue. Also, the report is called Race and Hispanic Origin of Victims and Offenders 2012 to 2015. Once again, the first page of the report treats us to some highlights. Then there's a screenshot, again, containing the URL so that you can see it's the exact same as the yeah. one cited at the bottom of the chart that I was just talking about. The highlights box has five little bullet points here. They are, during 2012 to 2015, half, 51%, of violent victimizations were intraracial. That is, both victims and offenders were the same race, or both were of Hispanic origin. In the majority of violent victimizations, white victims' offenders were white, 57%, and black victims' offenders were black, 63%. Right, overrepresented. The rates of total violent crime, uh, serious violent crime, and simple assault were higher for intraracial victimizations than for interracial victimizations. From 1994 to... I, at this point, I'm, I'm actually just kind of shocked that I even got a request to go over this video or go over this article because, like, 
I mean, this is so 2015 content. I mean, this is just like 1350, which we all learned like seven years ago or four years, you know, four years ago. 2015, white on white violence down 79% and black on black violence down 78% declined at a similar rate. During 2012 to 2015, there were no differences among white, black, and Hispanic intra-racial victimizations reported to police. As they mentioned in this report, 51% of violent victimizations were intra-racial, meaning both the victims and the offenders were the same race. Basically, if you should be afraid of anyone, you should be afraid of someone sharing your race, because <laughs> they're the ones who are most likely to act violently towards yeah, you. Yeah, right. But I was curious yeah, where those oh, yeah. very specific numbers... Yeah, 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 white people are so... They're, they're just as likely to form a mob and go, for instance, just ransack a random uh, convenience store and then go up on the Reservoir Park Hill in River West and go beat up a bunch of uh, white hipsters celebrating the 4th of July. Yeah, yeah, white people are just as likely to just do that because they're angry. Yeah, dude, totally. ...in the bar graph above came from. So I searched the report for the first big number, 540,873, supposedly the number of black-on-white violent incidents. And here's why the red bar graph is deceiving. It only focuses on interracial crime. Remember that the majority of violent crime is intraracial, not interracial. So while there were 540,360 interracial sure violence attacks the chart came up with 540,873 incidents of black people violently attacking a white victim there were 2,081,520 white people violently attacking other white people that's a huge difference there's a huge difference. Oh my god. The numbers from there's the a huge difference in population too. Here's what the actual data is. Okay, okay. And then okay, there's a picture okay, of this okay, table four. Okay. So there's four times as many fucking violent incidences, but there's what eight times the population? I mean, come on. Like stop it. 10 times the population. Four from the stop report, it. It says percent of violent victimizations by victim-offender relationship and race slash Hispanic origin of victim and offender 2012 to 2015. The key here is that for each of the three categories, white victim, black victim, and Hispanic victim, when we break it down between a white offender, a black offender, and a Hispanic offender, each group's average number uh, or the number of attacks from each group uh, is highest for that group the offender for the same group that they are within this guy's so, rambling dude uh, this guy's a, a fucking idiot victim had 2,081,520 offenders while there were only 540,360 black offenders but then if you look at the black victims then there were 537,470 black offenders compared to only 91,470 white offenders uh, same with Hispanic victims. When you look at the number of Hispanic offenders against Hispanic victims, you have 341,420. And both the white and the black offenders were roughly the same at close to 170,000. So, that's now three out of four debunked charts. No! Maybe the fourth zero. one will finally changed my mind. Gotta save the best for last, right? You, you did absolutely so zero debunking. This is titled Slide. Mass Shootings in 2016 by Race, United States. And then it lists the races in order of the number. Yeah, if that chart probably listed all, like I said before, all the rival gang picnics being shot up by black gangs or Hispanic gangs that the you know lefty mainstream media and the academic class will not touch with a 10-foot pole. Because mass of shootings that each race perpetrated. And the percent total. So going from top to bottom, we have black with 128 mass shootings, or 71.5% of the total. Latino, 19, 10.6% of the total. Black slash Latino, 13, 7.3% of total. White non-Muslim, 8, or 4.5% of the total. Asian. That's there were huge. Three people who perpetrated mass shootings. Man, that's huge. One point seven percent of the total. Muslim extraction. One, zero point six percent of the total, and unknown, 
7, 3.9% of the total. The source here is listed as the Gun Violence Archive, and it notes that the Gun Violence Archive has always used the FBI-derived definition four or more shot and or killed in yep. a single event or, mm -hmm. or incident at the same general time and location, not including the shooter. So that's all the information that was in that fourth one. And here's where we circle back to mass shootings. This chart is going oh. to show how black people, men, <laughs> commit way more mass shootings than white people, uh, men. Black men. But it's important to remember how we define a mass... 16 to 35-year-old black men. Yes. ...shooting. As I discussed yesterday, Mother Jones defines a mass shooting as any indiscriminate shooting that occurs Mother in a public Jones space definition and which results in four or more deaths. <laughs> but that's not how every database charts mass shootings. This fairly short article from the RAND Corporation outlines how different sources define and count a mass shooting. I'm going with the FBI. They dude. actually mentioned the gun violence archive in that post, the same database cited in the chart above. The Gun Violence Archive defines a mass shooting as one that occurs in any location, public or domestic, with four or more deaths and any motivation. It's the last part there that's key. Any motivation. This includes drug or gang-related violence. And when yes. you couple that with what we learned from the previous chart, how intra-racial violence is more common than interracial violence, You'll see that the 128 mass shootings committed by black people, men, is accurate but misleading. The majority How? of the victims of those 128 shootings were other black people, not crowds of unsuspecting white people. So? This is a chart specifically designed to make us fear black men, <laughs> even though white men are the ones most likely to perpetrate the kind of random mass shootings we hear about so often on the news. There it is! The exactly what I said. So if it's not a fucking disaffected, antisocial, mentally ill white dude going into a government building, or a, particularly a school, and if it's not said on CNN by Don Lemon, these shit libs don't consider it a Mass shooting. If it's Tyrone shooting up four rival gangbangers at a fucking rival gangbang fucking cookout, then they don't consider it a mass shooting because all progressives ever do is lie 100% of the time without exception. The representation Exhibit a. of data found in these charts is deeply worrying to me. I highly doubt most people, especially people with a propensity to believe all black people are violent criminals. <laughs> would perform the necessary research all, not to debunk all, these graphs. No one has said, there are some said who are all. simply looking to affirm what all? they already believe. But then there are others who are maybe on the fence, and when they see data presented in this manner, then, then they start to change their minds. That's the really dangerous, insidious effect that this kind of misinformation has. And with platforms like Twitter or Facebook, it's so easy to promote and propagate these deceptions. It's not a deception. You're deceiving. There's one last Stop thought it. I'd like to leave you with. Wait, wait, wait. I did a lot of research for these two articles, and the most staggering chart I found was from the BBC. In 2016, 38,658 Americans died from guns. Only 71 died in mass shootings. And in fact, there were only 14,415 homicides that year. Okay, the so... largest cause of gun deaths, 22,938, was suicide. And then there's a picture of that chart, uh, or the graph from the BBC. Of the total 38,658 who died in 2016, there were 22,938 suicides. 14,451 homicides, of which 71 died in mass shootings, and 1,305 other. Other here includes accidental deaths and war casualties. The source is the CDC. This guy is a piece guns. of shit. This guy is a worthless Almost pile of garbage. Almost 60% of gun deaths in the United States in 2016 were self-inflicted. If that doesn't convince you that owning a gun <sighs> is a threat to you or <sighs> loved one's safety... Then I don't know what will. Oh, soy to the boy. Oh God. Oh my God. That was painful to go through. So yeah. Once again, all progressives ever do is lie one hundred percent of the time, without exception. Okay. 